In this tutorial, I intend to show you how to import and size video, import and size stills, and match frame speed for a crawling multiple still and video image display. I do not show this specific effect in the tutorials, but I do show how stills and video are imported, as well as how to keyframe movements. First off, we need to decide on our parameters. This is important. Once we settle on these settings, we can begin to create the layout. For this project, let's make the main length of the crawl 20 seconds. Also, I'm going to have a 20 second film strip overlay section animate from right to left. You will need to download this film strip from the link below. I'll be extending the timeline by attaching a copy of the film strip to the end of the original. This presents another set of issues, but we'll go into that later. Once this is set, we will be importing stills and videos into the project and placing them in specific windows of the film strip. So the first thing we need to do is to create a couple of videos to insert into the film strip. VizTitle uses its proprietary codec VXMovie for movie imports. So in order to import a non-VX movie, we will have to first convert it. This is a two-part procedure, but once it is done, videos open within VizTitle just like the stills do. Open EDIUS and bring in a couple of videos that are either 20 seconds in length or that you can trim to 20 seconds. Create the in and out points on the first clip. Go to the export button or press F11 on your keyboard. Click on the quick time option in the left panel. When the exporter options open, scroll to the bottom of the panel and double click the quick time exporter plugin. At the top of the quick time settings panel, select where you are saving the file. Now go to the bottom of the panel and in the Save as Type drop down, select Image Sequence. After you have that selected, click the Settings button. An Export Image Sequence Settings panel will open. In this panel, you can select the format used in the sequence as well as the frame rate. You want to match the frame rate to the project setting. In my case, I am using a 2997 frame rate. And since I won't be needing alpha, I'm just going to use JPEG as my still codec. Under Options, select Best Depth and move the quality slider to Best. Now click OK. Leave the Insert Space Before Number tick box checked. Click OK to return to the main panel. Now name this sequence by typing a name in the file name input area. When you have all of the previous steps complete, click Save. EDIUS will create your sequence. This is the first step. Do this for all the videos that you wish to use in your project. Now that we have all of our videos in image sequence form, the next step is to open the VX MV Maker program. If you still have the shortcut on your desktop from when you installed VizTitle, double click it. If not, just go to the VizTitle folder and click the Viz MV Maker option. When the VX MV Maker program opens, look at the bottom left of the panel. You will see a plus button. Click this. Now navigate to the folder in which you saved your sequence. Click the first image in the folder and scroll to the last row. With your shift key depressed, click the last image. All of the stills will highlight and you then can click open. The files will load quickly into the program. Once the files are in the program, go to the top right side of the panel. You will see the clip resolution and pixel ratio. 
Below that is the width height ratio. Set that to original. If you click the clip tick box, you can resize the file before export. You can try this later, but for now, let's export it as the original. Below this is the frame rate, field order, and codec options. Match your frame rate to your settings. In my case, it is 2997. My field order is progressive, and we all will be using the VizTitle Movie codec. Below this, you will see a button with three small squares. Clicking this will allow you to designate a name and where to store your VizTitle Movie. When you return to the panel, you will notice that the camera icon is activated. To create your movie, just click the camera icon. Do this procedure for each video sequence that you created for the project. For the still images of this demo, I'm just going to use the Windows 7 sample photos. So before moving on, make sure that you have downloaded the Filmstrip file. After you have finished creating your movies, start a new sequence in Edius and create a new VizTitle layout. With VizTitle open, select Control Tab to open the library panel. At the top of the library panel, you will see the library header. Click the image option. When this opens, go to the bottom of the image library panel and you will see an arrow pointing downward. This is the image import button. You can also right click anywhere in an open space on the image panel to open a drop down for the import option. So using either option, navigate to your downloaded file and import it into the library. Double-clicking the file will add it to the edit screen and timeline. Now move it down so that it lines up with the inner safe area line. You will notice that the film strip is black. If your background is black, go to the wrench tool at the bottom right of the interface and click it. Change the background setting to white by clicking either the solid color color box or by using the white template option. Click Apply and OK to return to VizTitle. The film strip should be showing in the edit screen with a white background. Either click the far left tab of the library panel or press Control Tab to return to the timeline panel. Within the timeline panel, you will see a green bar that says Image. On the left side of the timeline panel, you will see the drop down arrow for the image track. These arrows will expand the tracks. Click this and then click the 3D transform arrow to reveal the keyframe area. Right click on the name and rename it to Film Strip. Grab the end of the clip and extend it out to 20 seconds. Fit the timeline within the timeline panel by using the view slider at the bottom left of the panel. Adjust the timeline view once more. As for future projects, if the item you are using as a frame is a little large for your needs, this would be the last point to make an easy size adjustment. Now we are going to animate this panel. This will be the master speed of the animation. If after you have finished your project, you decide that the speed is either too fast or too slow, watch the mini editor tutorial for instructions on changing the overall length. With your cursor at the beginning of the clip, click the translate keyframe node you will see a keyframe added. Go to the Effect tab and change the first keyframe setting of the Translate settings to 100. This will move the image off screen to the right. Click the arrow next to the Add Keyframe button 
and it will take you to the end of the timeline. Return to the first translate keyframe setting and make the value minus 100. This will move the film strip off of the screen to the left. To see this, click the navigation button or F10 to open effects editing mode. Scrub or play your file and you will see the film strip move from right to left. We will now add on to the movement by copying the existing film strip and adding it to the timeline. Earlier I mentioned that extending the film strip would present another set of issues, so make sure to follow the steps closely. First, click the navigation button to return to graphics editing mode. Close up the track by clicking the timeline reveal arrows. Go to the edit screen and place your cursor over top of the film strip. The film strip should still have a bounding box around it. If it doesn't, press Ctrl A on your keyboard to select it. Now right click and choose copy. Now click paste. A second instance of the film strip will appear in the timeline panel. Rename that film strip 2. Click the navigation button to return to effects editing mode. Drag the cursor until you can see the end of the film strip. Now drag the second instance of the film strip, film strip 2, to the right until the two sections meet. You might have to nudge it a little with the lesser, greater arrows on the keyboard. Let's make a marker point here just for reference. Place your cursor at this exact point and press M on your keyboard. A small triangle will appear. Click the navigation button to return to graphics editing mode. Before we go any further, adjust the view of your timeline again. With that set up, we can now import our images. Let's start with a still. Go to the menu bar and click and hold the image button until the drop down opens. Select image. Bring your cursor to the first open panel in the film strip. Starting in the upper left hand corner of the open panel, press your left click mouse button and drag your cursor so that the orange area created fills the space. Almost at the middle of the property panel on the right side, you will see a browse button. Click this and navigate to an image you are going to use. As I said, I'll be using the Windows 7 sample pictures. Double click your choice and it will populate the orange area that you just made. Name it so that you can identify it later. Adjust the size of the image so that it fits within the film strip cell. Now drag the image timeline out to the same length as the first film strip. Go to the first film strip and right click it. A drop down will open with the copy 3D transform option. Click this. Now move to the first imported image and right click it. Choose paste 3D transform. This same 3D transform setting will be applied to all of the media used in this type of project. Transferring the settings of the film strip to subsequent media will move all of the elements in unison, no matter where they are placed within the overlay element. Now your first file will play in time with the film strip. To insert a photo into the second cell, go back to the menu bar and select the image option again. Do as you did before and create an orange placard in the second cell of the film strip. And then import your image as you did before. Rename the file and drag the clip out to match the length of the film strip. Right click it and select paste 3D transform. Now the two items in the film strip will animate with the film strip. Do this same procedure for the next three cells. Okay, 
Now that you have all of the cells filled in the first film strip, turn off the first film strip and all of the files that were added to it. Select Film Strip 2 and drag it to the beginning of the timeline. Now go to the menu bar and select the video icon. Drag your cursor over the first cell in Film Strip 2, just as you did for the images, and the area will turn orange. Go to the right panel and select Browse to import one of the VX movies you created. Adjust the size on the cell, and that is all you have to do to add a movie to the film strip. Go ahead and populate the rest of your cells with either stills or movies. All right, now that we have the second film strip finished, we need to move it back into position. Hold your control key down and select Film Strip 2 and all of the items that are populating Film Strip 2. With them highlighted, drag them back to the marker point that you created earlier. Scrub the file. Now go back and turn on visibility for the first film strip and all of its components. Scrub the timeline one last time. Notice if the media within the film strip cells are all exact. If they're not, this is easily remedied. Go to Film Strip and right click it. When the panel opens, choose Move Bottom. Do the same for Film Strip 2. By doing this, both of the Film Strip overlays have been moved above all of the media. If everything looks okay, press Ctrl S to return to Edius. Grab the end of the layout and extend it. Place a clip underneath of the film strip layout and play it. That has it. The biggest thing that you can do for yourself is pre-planning. I can't stress that enough. Once you have all of your assets in one place and you know what you want to do, creating a motion graphic of this type is fairly easy within VizTitle.